Parashat Shlach discusses how the generation that left Egypt forfeited the right to live in the land of Israel. Twelve spies were sent to scout out the land, and ten of them came back with a negative report. The nation believed them. They wept. They cried. They said, it's not possible for us to defeat the people who live in the land of Canaan. And Hashem declared that that generation would wander for 40 years in the wilderness and the next generation would come in. We see from the earliest times that the land of Israel is something that is very hard to hold on to. And indeed, even when the people of Israel came into the land of Israel and they lived there for hundreds of years, eventually they lost the land when the first temple was destroyed and they were sent into exile in Babylon. And then again later in the times of the Romans when the second temple was destroyed after having stood for four centuries. And again, the Jewish people were cast into exile into the diaspora all over the world. What makes the land of Israel so hard to hold on to? The Talmud tells us that God gave the Jewish people three wonderful gifts, but that those gifts come with Yisum, with suffering, with difficulty. One of them is the Torah. Another one is the world to come. And the third is the land of Israel. They are wonderful gifts, but they come with a great deal of pain and suffering and difficulty. Why is this so? And the Maharal of Prague tells us because what they all have in common is that they are kadosh. They are holy. They are spiritual. They are set aside. The world to come, which is a place where we will receive ultimate reward. In order to, to earn that, one has to go through an enormous amount of difficulty in this world to overcome their desires, to overcome their temptations and their lusts, and to serve God with a great deal of mesiot nefesh, self-sacrifice, in order to earn the world to come, which is completely spiritual, and therefore our physical beings are really against it and opposing it the whole time. The Torah, the study of Torah, greatest gift that, the, that God gave to the Jewish people. It's wonderful. It is our life. It's our very lifeblood. It's the water that we exist from. But in order to become a great Torah scholar, you have to really push yourself. You have to stay up late. You have to go over the teaching over and over and over again. It's something that's holy, and therefore your natural desires are, well, why do I need to go study? Let me go do something more relaxing. And then there's the land of Israel. It's a physical land. It has rocks. It has water. It has dust. It has trees. But it's also kadosh. It's holy. The Talmud says the very atmosphere, the air of the land of Israel makes one wise. The fruit that grows there, the vegetation, the crops are holy. The sabbatical land applies to it. You have to give tithes on it. It has kadusha. It has holiness. And therefore, we who are physical beings struggle to hold on to something that is spiritual, that is holy. We pray for the time that once again we will be completely reunited with the land of Israel. There will be kibbutz galiot. All of the Jews will return to their ancestral home. And once again we could celebrate this incredible gift that God has given us and for which we have gone through so many challenges and suffering throughout the ages. I wish you a Shabbat Shalom.